Yes, yeah. sure. Okay, now we can start. Okay, so we have two weeks left in this class. So we have this class, which I'm talking about events, and then we have our final. So I'm gonna tell you about the final at the end of class so that you have two weeks to think about it and work on it. Because this one is just like the others. Give me your takeaways. This is not a hard assignment. The only shooting I want you to do is for your final, okay? But there's a bunch of goodies here. So here are three different events that I photographed. I tried to pick different kinds of events just so you could see how they work. But let's go over this. All right. Yay, photographing events. Of course, I know we've said this, I've said this every week, um, everything, planning, plan with your client. What do they want? What kind of event is it, first off? Is it ceremonial, like uh, awards? Um, is it a martial arts test or a roller derby? I saw a roller derby. Come on now, that's cool. Seriously, I think I'd like to go see one just because that looks really cool. Is um, it a social game? Say again. Sorry, are you just talking about it? Or are you supposed to be sharing a screen right now? You know, um, I should be sharing a screen. Thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. It's not coming up on my end. I don't know if forever. Nice. Yeah. Okay, better now? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you for saying that. I appreciate it. Um, social gathering, there are loads of things, and sometimes these are together, like an awards uh, banquet will also have a social gathering. Most everything has a social gathering to it. Is it a dance recital? Uh, kids, lots of dance recitals, those things are fun. Or is it a conference with speakers? So, I mean, what kind of event are you thinking? And then you got to ask the client, what do they want? Do they just want images from the social media event or for social media? Do they want the images and or video for next year's event to make promos? Do they want printed images? It really depends because you could be talking about the dance recitals. I want to get to that later, but there's an opportunity for extra sales there. So yeah, yes. That, that's my next thing. What other opportunities are there? Could you set up a photo booth for portraits? Selling prints or digital images from the event. Um, or come a different time for team and individual portraits. That's really important because that's where you can get in and really sell a lot of different images to the clients. And um, yeah, have some fun with that. So when you sell those individual images, that you're gonna do that through your gallery, of course. And that can be really nice. That becomes the better and more diverse images that you have, the more opportunity you have for selling them. If you only take one or two images, in other words, of a group, you only have the opportunity to sell one or two images. But if you take 10 and they're different enough, well, okay, you can sell 10. All right, so I'm gonna teach you a lot about this. It's gonna be hot and heavy and we're gonna go quick. Please jump in, let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna ask periodically. All right, so if you're doing a conference with speakers or a speaking engagement of some sort, uh, do find a spot up front. I'm imagining this is a large event, not a small event. If it's a large event, find a spot up front, sit in the front row, it's okay. Um, again, you've planned this with your person who's hiring you, you can go that. Then walk around to the sides. Please don't stand straight up and walk over because that's very distracting. But kind of, if the thing is going on, bend over and just kind of move over, you know, and and get out quickly. But go to the sides, get all kinds of images, not just one direction of a speaker. I'm talking about one particular speaker. You want a variety of images, so you wanna show them from all around. Can you get behind and get that crowd shot, the backside or a side of the speaker and seeing them lit and then the crowd? That's a great shot. 
the speaker can use that for all kinds of things, which is just wonderful to them. Get reaction shots of the crowd responding to the speaker. So if they're laughing, they're writing, they're doing their stuff, they're really intent, um, good ones. Sometimes smaller events are over lunch. Mm, be careful with that. Because you know, you can get those mouth open um, images, not great. The best images of the speaker are usually at the very beginning. People who speak on a regular basis, professional speakers will see you and give you good smiles and some great images. So be ready right offhand because they'll usually give it to you in the beginning and then you can be invisible and take your other shots while they're talking. Get smiles, laughs when they're animated. First to get the money shot, meaning get what you're there to be paid for, which is a good shot of the speaker, great shots of the speaker. And they don't wanna look like their mouth's open and they're doing some weird, you know, gangster signs. Um, they want to look good and they wanna look smiling and happy and so do the people around them. Wide, medium, close, over and over and over and over and over again. Wide, medium, close. Focal lengths, make sure to get wide shots, good medium shots, and good close ups. Okay, more about that. When there are conferences, there are vendors, because that's how they get a lot of things paid for. The vendors pay for their tables. They spend good money to be there, depending on how expensive the uh, event is or how popular the speaker is. The more popular the speaker, the higher money they paid for their table. So get photographs of the vendors at their table and get their info. Send those photos to them. They can use them for all kinds of things, which is nice. People uh, mingling and talking, great idea. This is good for your client's socials and website. Stick around the keynote speakers. They usually have photo ops and people want that. They want to see their faces, the, the important person. And hey, I was talking to so-and-so and this was really great. Um, headshots. You may have an opportunity at some sort of a business event to take headshots. That's a really, really great idea. We can talk about that more when it comes to pro portraiture class, but you can do that. If you can set up a booth and take headshots, you can make a lot more money. Um, if people are working, so what, maybe you're doing a workshop, uh, you're photographing a workshop, speaking, and they're taking notes, take pictures of that. That's a good one. And yes, the details, wide, medium, close. The person at the table taking notes. Closer, medium, the person taking notes. And then close, just the note taking itself. You don't necessarily want to see what they're writing. You just want to see them writing. That's really the idea. Okay, any questions so far? Any thoughts, questions coming up about conferences, speakers, that type of thing? I have a question. Go ahead. Um, I know you want wide, medium, and close shots. Um, yes. What type of like camera settings do you, like, like what type of settings would you use for like those type of shots? So depending on what's going on, I'm a now my thought is if we're at a big conference, let me stop sharing just for a sec, just so here. If we're at a big conference, um boy, they're gonna light the stage. So you shouldn't have to worry about lighting on the person. Mm. If you're at a smaller conference, they may not have that. They may not have lighting. So you might have a little bit more difficult situations. Um, I start first with ISO and end with ISO because I might need to adjust that. But then I'll go whatever lens. Just a reminder, this is the foundations of photography teacher talking right now. Remember that you, can only, you should not shoot any slower than the focal length of your lens. So if it's a large conference and you're using a long lens, like say a 7200, and you are at 200, 
you should not shoot slower than 200th of a second, 250th of a second, just to be good. So because of that faster-ish shutter speed, you're gonna be a little bit more tied down on your aperture. That's gonna be a little bit more wide open. And then I'm gonna adjust my ISO accordingly again. The idea here, um, you can do that manually to make sure that everything's working well and it's the way you like it. Sometimes it works to use shutter priority. So the shutter priority mode. So if you're in shutter priority, you can say, I want 250th of a second, ISO 1600, I'm just throwing out numbers. And the camera will tell you if it can do that or not with the aperture available on your lens. I'm getting geeky quickly. Everybody good with that? Yes. Okay, good. Good, good. So if you if it can't, if it starts blinking the aperture at you, that means that lens that you're using does not have enough aperture to get a proper exposure. Take a picture, see what it looks like. If maybe you have a black um, pipe and drape curtain behind you and it's trying to make it brighter because the camera is going to try to make everything medium gray. But this person looks fine. You're good. You can ignore it and just go on photographing. Does that help with the settings? Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts, questions about conferences and speakers? Speakers want photos of them looking good, not looking like some weird person going. Now, maybe they're talking, maybe they're laughing. They're doing something, but they they want to they want photos where they don't look like they're just alone on a stage talking to themselves. So people are good too, whether they're in the foreground or the background. And I mean the background, like you take the photo from behind. That's a very important shot if you can do it. Um speakers love photos of themselves speaking. It's a very, very good thing. All right, I'm gonna go back to screen share. Okay, talked about that. Action events. Yes. Find a spot where you're in the action, but not in the way. Um, I was watching someone the other day photographing a baseball game. And they're photo well, they're photographing the people. It was their last game. So it was a good time to capture all the people all the athletes on this team. And he was sitting, he set himself down on a baseline right in line with first base. First base always gets balls thrown to him. And this is little league. And these are like 11 year olds. They don't know how to play the game that well. They're not that good at catching everything. I almost saw this dude with an expensive camera beamed twice. He was, came so close to getting hit. So, be aware and don't be dumb. He had the right spot to capture the vast majority of the players while they were at bat. I say the vast majority because I think there was one left-handed player and you got a butt shot. Not great. But right-handed players, he could capture everyone. I just wouldn't recommend that he puts himself at the first baseline. Yeah, that's what I mean by don't get yourself in trouble, but yeah, get a good spot. Use a fast shutter speed to capture the motion. Um, different lenses, so a wide lens and a long lens, because you're going to be able to get close-ups, but then sometimes they're going to be really close to you, and you're going to want to get more wide shots too. You're probably not going to be able to use flash. So like I was just saying, try your aperture, sorry, your shutter priority mode the TV mode or S, whichever. So you can control the shutter speed and ISO while the camera adjusts the aperture for you. That was really very helpful. You may be, if you're photographing a team, like a baseball team, you may be able to set up a day to photograph the team and individuals with really great lighting. Bring your flash, bring the stuff you need, and you can sell those. You may be able to do that. They love them. It's a great thing. I have photos. I mean, come on, you all probably have photos 
from when you were on your whatever little league team and your mama has them and they're just wonderful. Okay. Graduations. I have photographed a few. Those are the kind of photos where the client pays you to do it all and just hand it over. Great. There's really no individual sales available after that. So you just make sure your price reflects what's appropriate for your time. Not 50 bucks. That's for damn sure. Um, can I get an amen on that? Really? Okay. Amen. Amen. Uh, thank, you. thank you. I'm like somebody. Thank you. Not 50 bucks. That's not your time. Um, use a long lens. And I mean over 100 millimeters, what I mean for a long lens to capture getting awards, capture the speakers. Here you often can use flash, but check with the person. And these are often in um, ballrooms that are dark and have no windows, no lighting except for just overhead lighting, which of course we know is gonna be really horrible on the people. You may be able to, because if they're hiring you, they want you, they want a professional. So if you, uh, hey, can I use flash in this? What room is it in? Where is it happening? Gosh, okay, so a dark ballroom. Can I use flash? And they might be like, oh yeah, absolutely. Because hey, the lighting in there is gonna be horrible for photography. And if I can use flash, then that'll be so much better. Um, if not, you may ask, about setting up a spot off to the side or in the back that you can set up a background and lighting or use a portion of the beautiful room that you're in, if, there, if it is, and get great images. And for the love of all things, please take lots of images, not just one. So I usually tell my clients right up front, I'm taking three images at least, yeah, like a graduation, They'll turn, click, click, click. I mean, quick, boom, 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 done. Next one, click, click, click. Two things I'm gonna say about that too is have extra batteries. If you have the speed light type that goes, sorry, I'm gonna also go, you can see me making gestures here. If you have a speed light type that goes up and it's on camera, on camera is not gonna use battery as fast, strangely enough, as when you have it off camera, but it still will use a lot of battery. So if you have the type that can take an extra battery pack, use it. That will help you tremendously. Shove that battery pack um, in your back pocket. So it's always with you. It's on a long stretchy cord. Anybody know what I'm talking about besides me? No? Okay. I'm going to go look it up real quick. Anyway, battery pack for your things. Now, if you're using off-camera flash and it's those bigger ones that don't have a, okay, that's fine. But have extra batteries, lots and lots of extra batteries. And know that if you're using a flash quickly, bum, 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 next graduate, like a graduation. Here's this person, one, two, three. Second person, one, I mean, you may get 30 seconds in between people long enough for somebody to say their name. Okay, your lights are not gonna recycle terribly quickly on their own, unless you have a battery pack or a high speed battery on there. Especially if you're using like 100% um, of the battery, like of the flash, it's gonna drain very quickly. That's gonna be a problem. Have extra batteries, change them out. And I mean, you're gonna have to get good at this. Like if uh, my speed light that sits on top of the camera, on the hot shoe. I can open that sucker, dump four batteries. They're gonna be super hot. They're gonna be super hot, know that. <laughs> Throw new batteries in, boom, ready to rock. And as soon as I start looking at it and it, they, the moment that I feel that it's lagging, I get ready to change batteries. They may not be dead, but that's gonna save you from having like three, like a third of the way in, you have dead batteries and you weren't prepared for that. If you're prepared, at least it's not so bad. If you have a battery pack that goes with that speed light on top of your camera, you're, it's gonna, you're not gonna have to change that out so often. Cool? Okay. 
Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate your head nod. All right. Secondary is when you've taken images of someone, say thank you. Even if you mouth it, it's fine. It's a human thing. It's a nice thing. And it tells people nicely that you're done with them. And it's just, it's very nice. It just, it's nice. Okay. Dance recitals. Parents are generally on a cell phone. And they get all kinds of photos and pictures and videos of their kids from far away using their cell phone. But if you're hired to photograph the recital, which is the end of their um, semester of sorts, um, I'm not a dancer, and I forget how often it, any of you, any of you uh, dancers, as you were as a kid or even now, how often do they do recitals? Anybody? Recital once a year, but they might do like a midway through the year, kind of like a Christmas show. Okay. Recital, like the big end of year one, but they oh. usually only do it once a year. Possibly and, one though. And you have different teams that you're practicing a routine with for that mm -hmm. time, correct? You're taking classes and you're practicing yeah. a routine. Yeah. Correct? Mm -hmm. So as this team, and maybe there's all kinds of age groups. They have little kids, which are, oh my gosh, they are as adorable as they sound when they're little kids all the way to teens and maybe even adults. I just saw one the other day that had just that. They even had adults doing it. It was great. All these different things, there are different teams that you can photograph. I'm saying that because that's another way that you can make money is to talk to the owner and go and photograph these teams before they finish uh, their year, their, their whatever it happens to be, whatever time frame. Um, if it's Christmas, Christmas is great, but you would go on a different day and do that. Okay, I'm going to come back to that. But generally, if you're hired to photograph the end of the year, their recital, you're just hired to give the finished images to the coordinator or the school owner. Ask about the big moments so that you're aware. Um, the one I just saw not very long ago was in um, just a couple of weeks ago was in Bancroft Park, um, Old Colorado City. And they had a couple of people that they wanted to recognize. So besides the regular venue and things that were going on, they wanted to recognize a few people. Well, I would have asked that if I was photographing it. Oh yeah, we want to give an award to this person and a thank you to that person. And they've been around for a long time. Okay, I'll make sure I get a good photo of them. Keep your camera up all the time. Be aware. You never know when things are going to happen. It's a good thing just to know. And then again, you could talk to the school owner about coming and photographing the groups and individuals. Again, Mia, I'm sure that you have, uh, your parents have photos of you at this age up on the wall somewhere in some sort of dance costume. Am I correct? Oh, yeah. I got lots of individuals and groups and everything. Yep. And, but then you can use, you do this on a different day. Um, hopefully before that semester or the year or the whatever is over, right at the end when everyone looks good, they have their costumes, they do their things, maybe they're doing dress rehearsals. That's a good day to go and photograph these folks with your lights and with everything. Set it up the way you like it. Okay. Any questions so far? We talked about action events, um, graduations, dance recitals. Questions or thoughts? I just want to say if you ever want to photograph a recital and you want to do the groups and the individuals, just if you do it on the same day that the recital is, it's like the most stressful thing in the world. Just don't. <laughs> Yes. Just don't Amen. do it on the same day. It's the worst. There you go. But we usually have a uh, separate day where we do like all the makeup and hair and costumes and stuff we would for recital, but it's like a week before. Okay. 
And how do they sell those images? Um, I'm actually not sure because my mom does that. <laughs> oh, okay. Gotcha. I think it's through, um, it, they definitely give it back to the studio owner and then we get like an email and it's like, here's all of your kid. And then you can like choose to buy them or not. Oh, okay. That's interesting. All and right. If you want to get individuals done, those cost extra. And see, I would just do them because if you're in the mode, every kid likes to, they're, you know, a couple of minutes in front of the camera and just really enjoying it. If they don't buy it, they don't buy it. You have great images that you can show. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, yeah. maybe you sell 50%. I prefer. One more time? It depends on the photographer, but we've had the, I don't know if you know Carmen. I don't. Um, but she's done our dance photos for years. She knows Danielle. Okay. Yeah. Great place. Great places. And I think every school should have them. Every dance school. Everybody. Any other things you want to add to that, Mia? I think so. I think that's it, really. Anybody else? Thoughts? Questions? All right. All right. There are opportunities to do all kinds of things. You got to find it. Yes, like I said, with some of these uh, high school graduations and a lot of other events, I'm really just hired to take the images, shoot the event, and hand over the finished images. That's it. It's an easy job as far as like there's not a lot of extra stuff I need to do. But, okay, that's just fine. Sometimes there's others. Um, if you are doing martial arts, you, you might be able to go and photograph folks like um, individually, like we were talking about the dance recitals. I did martial arts for many years. And uh, you want to do that after they get their belts, especially black belt testing. If you're looking at a school, you might want to ask, hey, how often do you guys do black belt testing? And can I come in? And you would do it right after the test. You have two opportunities there. One is to photograph the testing itself. Two is to come after and do uh, photos for the school. And you would offer them, you know, the groups like some families or maybe they have friend groups that they like to work out with. Uh, the people individually, absolutely, all kinds of good stuff. Again, the more images you take, the more that you have the opportunity to sell them. Uh, you can head, set up a headshot space at business events. Everybody loves a good headshot, especially if they see that you've got good lighting. They're more apt to do that versus some dude hanging, you know, like making it look like a mug shot up against a wall. Not cool photo baseball game, all these things. If they are spending money, lots and lots of money on their sport, I, that's a good shot, good idea that they would like photographs later. Just going to throw that out there. Okay. So like I said, most conferences have vendors. Most everybody has a vendor when it comes to those things. Photograph them at their table, doing their thing, talking to people and having interaction with other folks, whether they're trying a product, picking up a thing, talking and laughing, whatever it happens to be. Get the vendor's info, get their business card, easiest way to do it, including social handles, because you can make your post then, which is very, very appropriate. Um, not just show them in their work, but people using it, if you have the eye of the opportunity. Guys, this is networking at its best. And it's most simple. Meeting somebody, doing something for them first, and sharing it with them. Give first. It's the most simple thing to do. It's genuine. It's true. It's not a quid pro quo, meaning I do something for you, you do something for me. But it's putting good things out there, saying, 
okay, I'm going to do something good for you first. I know that I can be a help to you. And in return, I hope that you're a help to me too. It's going to hopefully spur you on to, yeah, to appreciate that and maybe do something for somebody else. Or if you could use my services, hopefully you'll remember me. All right. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the term shoot and burn. It's pretty straightforward. The burn came from the time of that, that um, phrase came around, CDs or DVDs were the way to give images to your client. Okay, I'm gonna get off the share for a second. Yeah, I'm that old. I've been photographing that long where images were given to people on a disc. I still burned CDs about two years ago. I was still burning photos on the CD <laughs> until my CD drive crashed and I, I finally stopped and got USB uh, sticks and everything. Oh, I stopped doing it when computers stopped coming standard with CD drives. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I literally have no way to do this. <laughs> and well, and then online galleries became so much more common. I mean, like everybody, when uh, 2020 and the pandemic hit, some people used Zoom. Now everybody knows Zoom. It's become its own thing, like a Kleenex or an Oreo or a Coke. You want a Zoom later? I mean, everybody knows in the business world knows what that is. So used to be, so shoot and burn, man, you would just shoot it, take all your photos straight out of camera and just burn them onto a CD and boom, you're done. Eh, that's what that means. Anybody who's thinking I'm old, I am. <laughs> old and wise okay please always call and emit edit your images it's just a reflection on you Stra crop straighten exposure and color correct all your images this is where i'm going to throw in my uh two cents to get an editing house um the one i've used in the past has been photographers edit I know there's a bazillion, just like galleries, there's a bazillion places you can get your photos edited. It shouldn't cost you an arm and a leg. It should cost you, um, well, for like, for instance, a wedding, a full-on wedding with two shooters, I'd pay about $300 for a wedding to be edited. I'm going to look at your faces again, or your names and Brian's face. It's so worth your time. How many have you ed edited a couple thousand images? That takes time. And you probably have a full-time job and you're probably doing this still because you're students part-time, meaning whenever you can get work and you don't got the time to do that. Now, the idea of giving up $300 out of your wedding or event or whatever to get these em edited images, but good grief. Might seem like a lot, but how much is your time worth? And if you could be enjoying your time more versus slaved to a computer. I don't know how many of you have families, people you'd rather spend time with, but to me, it's just as simple as, yes, exactly. You don't want over or under exposed photos. Um, to have someone just make sure that it's, the calling mean they've got the best images. Um, they correct them, color correct, exposure correct, strop, crop, straighten. That got shortened to strop apparently in my brain. Um, and give them back to you. That is just so worth it. And it usually takes a week. Eh, not a big deal. Again, if you know that you're going to do that and you tell the client, I will have these photos with to you. I usually say within seven to 10 business days, that just bought me two weeks. But if I used an editing house and I got it to them the next day, say I photographed something on a Friday night or Saturday, I upload on Sunday and it takes them a week to get it done. They'll get it to me end a week, maybe the weekend. I turn around and get it to the client. It's great. And it's done. You didn't have to do any more work. You could spend the time with your family, doing whatever doing your, whatever it is that you wanted to do. It's worth it. And they do the job better than I do, I found. Because I work on it piece at a time. 
and I get bored and I'm just like, oh, you know, it's like, I do not want to look at these people anymore. I don't want to look at this work. I don't want to do this job. I don't want to be a photographer. I mean, after a while, you just really get to hate in life. And there was a couple seasons before I used an editor that I even know these things existed, that I was photographing weddings and portraits and all kinds of stuff all the time, all weekend. My computer was sitting down in the other room and I'm like, I could be working on that client's photos, but I want to watch this movie. I could be working on photos, but I'm not, let's screw that. Get an editor, use an editor, and it'll make your life easier for these larger things. I guarantee it. Okay. That's my spiel. That was actually part of the contract I have with the roller derby girls. They give me two weeks to edit however many images I take so last the last game I took over 4200 images and I was able to get it back to them in like a few days because I I was off of work so I had nothing but time <laughs> but well, yeah, yeah it was just a pain in the butt sorting through that many photos and narrowing it down to like 390 just to get back to them so yeah yes. it, I, I'm definitely looking into like photo editing services that I can just upload them and be done and not have to worry about it yep good job because it's your life will be so much easier and then just include that cost into your price that you charge them i mean if you're making four thousand dollars on a wedding five hundred dollars for editing is not that big of a deal you just know that it's there it's like paying taxes oh right do get those images to the client ASAP. Don't take forever because they're going to get your, they're going to get their cell phone photos right away, of course. And they're going to be sharing those all over the place. And if they have to wait a month to get images from you, they're going to forget about it and be kind of upset. Eh. But this is what distinguishes you from all those other people and this kid with a camera or some Uncle Bob that's got, I have everything in the world because I have disposable income and I'm just as good as you. No, they're not. We know they're not. Um, but getting finished images to the client as quickly as possible is a really big distinguisher and just shows so much professionalism. Online gallery, we talked about that. Gives an online gallery... An online gallery also gives you opportunity to show off your work, like a library. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to teach you a little bit about, a little bit about business headshots. I will cover, physically cover how to do it in professional portraiture class. If you haven't signed up for it and you want to, it's a, I only teach it once a year in the fall semester. So that was a plug for the class. You set up a background and lights, at least a two light setup. Um, you may not need to do these individually, like um, tether and then shoot and name them individually. You may not need to do that. Again, plan with your client. I have one client that's a large company and they want as little as much uh, they have to do work as possible. So I photograph and I tether to my laptop here. I open up Lightroom because it's not a pad. It's a, I have the original Lightroom, not Lightroom mobile. So I tether, I um, name each client, each one. So their photos have their name on it because I'm never going to know who they are or remember them. That's just it. I tether, do it. And then I get their email. They sign up. I get their email, do the whole bit. And then I send each individual person their own gallery with their own photos. And then for the client that hired me, I will send them a gallery of all the finished images. They already have the client, each person's name as they were photographed and they have all the images. So they love it because I, I provide that service as well. But sometimes I'll go to a place and it's small enough that they don't care. And I can just photograph people and then hand over the finished images. And I don't have to name them individually. Did that make sense to y'all? I can't see your faces, so you're gonna have to tell me. 
Sort of, kind of, yeah. Just got to, like, actually do it for for it to make sense to me, at least. Gotcha. Well, I'll just say it one more time because it's really important. Um, I'll use, I use Lightroom. I started with Lightroom. I love Lightroom. I still use Lightroom. They have tether, tether capture. So it's plugged into my, com my camera to the computer. And I start a new folder, each client. So say I'm photographing you, Brian. I'll, this date, Brian Foxworth, boom, boom, boom. Open, start photographing you. Everything that's in there is going to have your name and your date on it, which is nice. Every image. So I'm going next to Mia. Mia's my next person. Great. New, I stopped tether capture, started again. Now it's Mia. Now it's Avery. And now, you know, it goes on from there and there and there. So when I go through those images later, they're all in individual folders on my hard drive. And every photograph, because I tethered capture and I changed the name instead of like MX45213, it says Brian Foxworth one, Brian Foxworth two, Brian Foxworth three, you know. So I can have those images. Every person has a name. Very helpful. Very, 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 very helpful. Takes an extra moment, but you get you get used to it, just like anything with, you know, repetition. Uh, very helpful. Then later, once you have those people, so the large company I'm thinking of that hires me to come and photograph their people, I will set up um, an Acuity account, which is calendar. That's really it. And everybody signs up for their own slot. I give them a five minute slot and everybody signs up for their own. But when they sign up, they give me their phone number and their email. So I have that. I have their name, their phone number, and their email. So later I can just double check. I've already got name. Here's Brian Foxworth's photo. Here's Brian Foxworth's information. Great. Here's your gallery. Here you go. Have a nice day. It's pretty straightforward and I love it. Love doing it. Did that help? Okay, good. All right, we are getting close to the end here, y'all. Hang in. Okay, business headshots, we talked about that. Okay, large events with loads of people. Um, marathons, Spartan races, um, folks like that. They want their images. Again, if they are an athlete or something, they have, they're a dancer. They put time and effort into their sport, whatever it is, their activity. There's a chance they're going to really want their photos. So you coming along as a professional who understands how to use that camera and do the right things with good lighting and whatnot, they're going to want those photos. Um, okay, I'm just going to talk about a race because um, I do lots of them and I have great photos from them. Post yourself in the beginning, parts of the race, but not in the very beginning because there's a huge line of people coming at. You're not going to get a lot of individual photos. Maybe go down a half a mile. It's not that far to walk. The crowds will thin out by then and you're gonna get a lot more individual pictures. That will help tremendously. And as far as selling those images, because that type of thing is, you give them to the coordinator of the event, but you can also sell the images. Very again, important. Um, if you go, if it's a long race, if you go somewhere in the middle, photograph them again, people love that. And then at the end, that is the most important is these end pictures. When they cross the finish line, yes. Um, I have seen photographers set up what looks like a beach chair and have a cover over it, not just an umbrella, but a full cover. So they're, cause they're sitting in the sun, you know, it's gonna get hot and they got a long lens and they're just picking everybody as they start coming down the, the finish line. Every single person, love it. Um, then put them up on a gallery and let folks go at it. They can eat the type of gallery that I have personally. People can buy individual images. Um, 
whether they're prints or downloads, so the, the, the digital files, or I can set it up as an entire gallery. So that may not work for a large, where like 500 person um, event, one racer may not want the entire event, but maybe they have 13 or 14 different images from their thing. And it might work better for them monetarily to get the whole thing. Sure, fine. Um, always put your watermark on the gallery, but through the gallery. Um, for instance, again, I use Smug Mug and I have a place where I can put the watermark into the system and they will put them on my images when I tell it to. And right in the middle. So people won't steal your stuff. Well, if they do steal it, it's really obvious they stole it. Um, yeah, it's very helpful to do that. This could also work for, say you're doing um, a rodeo. Maybe you're photographing an entire rodeo. I've never photographed a rodeo, but I've seen portions of rodeos. And um, I can imagine that people would want some of those images. This is one of the ways that you could do that and actually make money from it. Okay. Hey, small events. You can make, as far as I'm concerned, you can make a quote unquote an event from all these different things. You had a farmer's market. Remember the vendors, but talk to them first because now you're in a business setup and just walking up to somebody and starting to photograph them is a little weird. In a conference and you start walking around and photographing, you're kind of assumed to be working with the conference and that's kind of okay. But if you're in a farmer's market and everyone's on their own, you need to talk to them and be like, hey, yes, I'm carrying around this big camera. Yes, I'm a photographer. Can I take some photos with you? Yeah. People having fun interacting with the vendors, those are important shots. Eating food, playing with dogs, et cetera. Family gatherings. Um, I don't know if any of y'all have big families, I do not. But there's loads of opportunities for games and fun photos of people together at a family gathering. No vendors, but uh, that's an opportunity. Church service or another event like that. They can always use the images for socials and website. And again, I cannot tell you how much that wide, medium, and close, and details are important in those images. Um, I volunteered for my church for a few years, and I still see them all around. Um, we have like a bunch of different congregations, so there's, man, there's just so many photos all the time. And you can volunteer to photograph events for nonprofits. They usually don't have the money set aside because they're a nonprofit for that type of thing. But if you volunteer, it's again, thing that you can use in your portfolio. That's actually worth it. It's not someone being cheap and not being willing to pay you. Okay. All right, you guys have heard me talk a lot. Now let's go to, shame and screen share. Let's go to some of these that I have in your Come on. There we go. All right. Well, first off, I'm going to go back to the content on this class because I have two. Um, good grief. Jensen Sutta, he is well into event photography. I don't know where he lives now, nowadays. Funny enough, he was one of my instructors when I was in art school. And then Tara Patty is a local photographer. They do things completely differently. All right. This is what she charges for her events and what she gives. I'm gonna let you guys go through more of that yourself. But again, what I've talked about, okay? People talking, doing their thing. They're obviously at an event. One of these were probably a keynote and they're just conversing and doing their thing. People talking, having fun. 
golf events. Yes, speakers. This is fun. That's a fun image. Awards. Definitely a place where she needed to use light. Can you tell? The grief. Um, oh, headshot station. There you go. Lovely. So good stuff you can check out there. And Jensen, he's got a very cool style. He meets really cool people. Let's see, recent blogs, yes. Love that with the city in the background. And again, these are curated images. They're not everything. They're just a couple to throw in a blog. But hopefully he put in a whole lot. Yep, the St. Regis made a link. So he's talking about the vendors that are there. That is just a very, very cool thing. Um, let's see what he's talking about. Again, blog, good things. Been a photography. Gosh, not a bad photographer. I think he's missing some ideas as far as being able to link back to people. I think he's missing that. But there's some folks I wanted to be able to show you around and talk about things and what he's done and what they do. There are event photographers. Okay. So let's go back to the assignments. Slowly but surely. Okay. Stick with me. I don't have much longer for you guys. All right, so I've got three here that I've done just to show you all kinds of different things. I think this one was fun. So it's for a local charity, Ronald McDonald House. And they used to have uh, tournaments and gallery stuff. And it was just, it's a lot of fun, to be honest. Vendors like crazy. Everybody volunteers to give their stuff. And then they have auctions. So I walked around and I got people interacting with the auctions, um, interacting with the people that are, they, come on, how cute is that? They probably use that photo all over the place. They had entertainment, so I captured the entertainment, everybody together, and then individually. So they have all this fun stuff. And if people were having fun and talking and standing up, I got pictures of them. I and have they pictures. Uh, the, the lady with the tattoos and purple hair, I got pictures of her at uh, Territory Days. Oh, this one? Cool. Yeah, yeah she I'm was sure they were actually no, that whole band. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I, I tagged them, but I haven't heard anything back from them on Instagram. But yeah, I tagged all of them and and all the pictures I took of them. Well, stick with it. The more that you even if you direct a message them, they're like, hey, I, I took some photos. Hope you guys enjoyed them. Whatever. You know. Hopefully they're not rude enough to not answer you unless they're in a completely huge busy season. That's what I'm I'm guessing. So it's to me, it's not a big deal. If they got the pictures, great. If not, then eh, no harm, no foul. Gotcha. But if you want to do more work with them, there's an opportunity. Um, so I ask people, I like to get folks together and looking at the camera. So I will literally walk up to them and, hey, can I take your picture? And I'll pick the camera up and... I have not yet had anybody say no. They stand together and give me a good smile or they be a cowboy like this guy and just stare at me. But generally, they do give me a good smile. Uh, um, let's see. Oh, yeah. So vendors doing what they do. So serving the food, not just standing in front of it, but serving the food. And if they're cool enough to have something on the back of their shirt, well, great details 
by the way. More details, more details, more fun. Trying to find other ideas here that I can show you. Speakers, awards. Obviously, I needed to use light in here. I don't know if you can tell by the way they're looking that I used flash. Popped it up into the ceiling. Got close. Captured everyone as they were getting whatever kind of award. Um, yes, all these things. So feel free to look through those. Conference. Okay, so you guys can look through these on your own. Notice all the things we talked about. The assignment here, it's again to give me the three takeaways. But I wanted you to have lots of ideas of what event photography looks like. Okay, before I go on to the final, any questions about this assignment or events or anything else? I think it's pretty simple. Just got to find an event <laughs> or something happening that we could take some pictures of. Okay. Well, hopefully I've given you enough ideas that you can come up with something. All right, the final. Okay, oh, let's make this the right date. Excuse me a moment while I make this appropriate. Um, 29th, right the day before our last class. Okay. Come on. Come on, you can do it, little computer. All right. Street festival, a wedding, an engagement, concert, church, um, anything really can become an event. However, I'm going to say this one needs to be something with some vendors. So mm -hmm. let's talk, let's brainstorm how we can make other events that you guys do have available work for you. So capture and show who, what, where, when, why, and how. Pretty much go through it all. Go through all the, uh, the outline of the wedding and apply these principles to your event. Where is the event held? Who are the important individuals, groups, people? What are the details involved? Capturing all the things, wide, medium, close. Okay, this I've said ad nauseum. One, you have three parts of this. Gallery of images. Please, for the love of my time and yours, do not bombard me with 500 images. And say, she'll pick the best ones. She will get bored with you and give you a bad grade. Gallery of the images telling the story of the event. At least 20, maybe more. Please don't make me put a cap on that. But call your images, okay? <laughs> Please call your images when you turn them in for this event. Turn it in as a PDF. You can make presentation in Canva with a free account. And then turn it in as a PDF. Make them large images, um, one or two per page so I can see them. So if it's vertical, you could put two. If they're horizontal, put one. At least two vendors with contact person and contact info. Email, phone number, IG, social media is a bonus. You can ask for their business card and, hey, are you on Instagram? Get that info. These need to be real people at a real place with real contact info. I don't want you to make this up. Okay, and then social media posts. Now you can either make the post or you can fake it, totally fine. And a max of 10 images, and write your captions. Again, turn it all in as a PDF. It'll be great and on your images to tell a story. Where were you? Um, all the details that go along with that. Also good photography. Needs to be well lit, in focus, you know, all that good stuff. Two, making contact with your vendors and getting their contact info. And then three, being able to make up a social media post to show off your skills, your photography skills, 
and tell the world about your event. Bonus points for more than two vendor contacts, bonus points for more than one social media post. Okay, questions. For the social media post, you said 10 images for that and then captions. Is that Maximum like. Maximum of. Okay, so is that like one caption per image or is that like one caption per however per post. many? You... Per post. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you might be making one for a vendor and you have five images for that vendor. Great. Make the post for that vendor, show those five, Im five images and go on. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, cool. Other questions? How do you want us to turn in our social media posts? It, on the PDF. So screen capture, put it on the PDF. Um, yeah, if it's, if it's a real post, screen capture, put it on the PDF, and then give me a link. Okay. If it's a fake post, which is totally fine. Um, um, dumb, dumb, dumb words. Do it like you would do a social media post. Just don't post it. Screen capture, put it on the thing. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Other questions? All right, hang with me a moment, please, while I take um, attendance so I don't forget to do that, which I really honestly don't think involve really anybody cares about, except for that it's done because it's summer and everyone's on vacation. All right. Yeah, you don't have much time left. I like it though. Has this class been helpful for you guys? It's helped me out as far as like doing the events and sporting events that I do. So now I have a better understanding of how I want to go in there, shoot and distribute images. Good. Caitlin, you're here, good. Catherine. Well, the way I inherited the class, I didn't think it was very helpful. So I redid it. And I'm really glad that that's helpful. Lose Matt today. He is here. No, Ruth and Tabith is here. Okay. There we go. No more questions, correct? Everybody's good? All right. I did resubmit my final. I saw that. Thank you very much. That looks really good. Thank you for taking that feedback and going with it. Thank, thank you for the feedback. I actually really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, that's another thing, guys. If you turn in your final early, it's been available to look at. So if you wanted to turn your in, turn your final in, you get feedback and you can redo it to before the class ends. So if you wanna, if you have something photographed and you wanna go ahead and turn it in next week, go for it or this week or whatever. I will look at it, give you feedback and you're welcome to redo it. Okay, you guys have a great day. It was wonderful to see you and work with you. Thank you. Um, if I do end up getting a full grade for the final, do I need to be in class for the rest of this semester? I'm thinking, no ma'am, I don't have anything new to teach. This was the last of my teaching lessons. So you are welcome to go and yes, you're okay, good. Awesome. I'll keep an eye out on my grade then. Thank you so much. Hey, I meant to ask. So. How did that go for you? Um, because you got all those vendors. Is that something you want to continue doing, photographing those things? Did that help oh, you? Oh, definitely. Good. Um, so I tend to collect a lot of vendor information because I'm trying to set up my own con eventually down the line. 
um, and this is drastically going to help with that. Um, but yeah, collecting the vendors is definitely one big thing I've been doing, but the cosplay portion of it is probably the, the main focus just because that's what I really love.